Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A-plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk all about chipsets. This comes from our CompTIA A-plus 220-701, our Essentials Exam, Section 1.2, where we need to explain motherboard components, types, and features, and specifically, we're going to talk about chipsets. We're going to learn all about the chipsets on our motherboard, the entire layout of the motherboard, and we'll go into details about chipsets and what we really mean about those. First, let's start talking about motherboards. These also can be known as MOBOs. We call them system boards. They have a lot of different names. But it's such an integral part of your computer. Everything that happens on your computer, it all begins and it all ends on the motherboard. So it becomes very, very important when we buy a new computer, when we try to determine the specifications of a computer, that we understand exactly the way this motherboard works and the way that it's laid out. You'll very often see it written up as a MOBO. You go to a motherboard website, and they'll talk about it as MOBOs. On the message boards, they talk about MOBOs. It's the cool way of talking. That's the way the kids are these days. It, there are very standard sizes for these. The motherboards themselves aren't just some that you decide, uh, well, I want one about uh, yay big by yay wide. doesn't work that way. The motherboards are specifically sized to fit into particular kinds of cases. So you can't just pick uh, and decide what you want. You have to really make sure that your motherboard size, that the size of the case it's going to go in, and everything else matches exactly the same kind. There's always going to be changes on motherboards. The chipsets change all the time. There's different bus speeds coming down the pipe all the time. There are new cooling methods available. The technology itself is under constant change and constant flux. But there are certain components of the motherboard that tend to be the same, whether it's on an older motherboard or a brand new one. You're going to see some similarities as we go through this module on chipsets. Here's a picture of a motherboard that I have in my office. This motherboard is one where if you look down on it like this, there's a lot of different components on this. We need to be familiar with everything on this motherboard. And the things that we aren't familiar with, we need to know exactly how to figure out what those things are. And as we go through this module, you're going to learn about all of these different pieces. You'll also learn about what's important about where they are on the motherboard. And at the end of this, we're even going to go through and try to figure out some of the chips I didn't recognize. How did I figure out what those were? We'll see it in this module. Let's start our conversation with chipsets. And just like the name implies, a set of chips put together, that's a chipset. Sometimes it's an individual chip with a lot of different components in there. What I have here is a picture of that motherboard I just showed you. But I, what I did was take all the different components of the motherboard, and I separated them out on this screen with names so we could get an understanding of exactly how the motherboard works. Now, on your computer, we're going to start on this left side and work our way to the right. We have a CPU. We know we're always going to have a CPU inside of our computer. We got an entire video module just on CPUs. That CPU is going to connect to something called the North Bridge. This is one of the major chipsets inside of the computer. You may not hear this referred to as the North Bridge much anymore. Many people call it the memory control or hub, which certainly helps us understand a lot more about what that does. This is a very, very powerful chip that's in your motherboard that manages the, for the process of the CPU talking to the memory, in some cases talking across a high-speed graphics bus to a, a graphics adapter. You don't see that too much uh, on some older systems. It's really new ones and motherboards that were designed just for these high-speed graphics. And I've also made these black pipes, these buses between these devices. I've tried to size in a way that you can understand where are the biggest buses on your computer. And this front side bus that goes between your CPU and the North Bridge is an extremely important part of your computer. So important that when you're buying a computer online, go out to a website and look at the specifications for a computer. They almost always specify the speed of the FSB, the front side bus. And that's what they're talking about. The faster you get information going back and forth between your memory controller hub and the CPU, the faster this machine's going to be able to go. You also want to have a very fast bus for the memory bus. And generally, we try to see very often if the front side bus and the memory bus are the same speed so we can keep this going as quickly as possible. You may see on some motherboards you can buy memory that runs at different speeds. And the faster the memory, the faster your computer is going to go. There's obviously a price associated with that as well. 
This north bridge is extremely important, but you'll notice the north bridge, north bridge usually connects to a south bridge. The north and south really there to designate where the different parts of the motherboard are, but they also designate what the different chips do. The south bridge is responsible for handling input and output. In fact, we call this the I.O. controller hub as well. Our USB ports connect to this. If we have a graphics controller, a video card that's on board the motherboard, it usually connects to the south bridge. All of our PCI buses, uh, those lower speed buses connect through a south bridge. If there are other ports like the BIOS port, uh, serial, parallel, floppy drives, keyboards, those are a little bit slower. So the South Bridge is a perfect chipset to use to be able to keep track of all of those things and send all of that back up to the North Bridge and the CPU over that internal bus of the motherboard.